So last week we took a look at the Lee Enfield rifle, one of the most iconic bolt actions ever produced and used in combat. It was used for over a century by the British Empire and its colonies, truly a weapon that has stood the test of time. This week though, we're going to be taking a look at a less common firearm, but one that I've become very attached to in Battlefield 1. This week on Weapon History, we're going to be taking a look at the Italian self-loading Che Rigotti rifle. Now before we get into the history, let's look at what DICE have done with this weapon in Battlefield 1. The Che Rigotti is the starter weapon for the Medic class, offering players an easy footing into the role of reviving people and patching players up. It comes in three variants, the Factory, the Trench and the Optical, and the weapon is really focused on close to medium range work, leaning more towards the medium range. The lack of a true high powered optic version really limits players at longer ranges. Despite it having a named variant called Optical, that simply refers to the upgraded sights that that version has, which work very similarly to the Lee Enfield Carbine variant. The factory variant of the Che Rigotti offers the user the benefit of a faster time for the recoil and the spread to decrease after each shot, meaning you can fire the weapon a little bit faster as it will reset to the center of the screen a lot quicker than the other variants. This is helpful for those people who like to follow up with another shot at those longer ranges where sometimes a player might be able to sneak away and get behind some cover. Now the disadvantage of course is that you're limited to pure iron sight combat which isn't the most efficient for those longer ranges. That's where the optical comes in, offering a red dot sight setup making aiming much clearer and it will help you hit those targets that are a bit further away. You trade out that faster spread and recoil decrease though, which is actually very important on the Che Rigotti, in favour of the weapon not having as much spread with the bullets to begin with. That means when you're aiming down sights you can be more confident that where you're looking is where the bullets are going to go. Of course you've got to lead the target a little bit if they are moving, but the spread of the bullet is tighter, meaning when you aim it's going to go a little bit closer to where you think it's going to go. Finally, the trench variant offers better hip fire accuracy, which can be a very valuable asset when you're using this weapon in close quarters. The Rigotti can also fire in full automatic mode as well, and for the trench variant, I'd highly recommend turning that on, as it turns the weapon from a medium range precision weapon into a close range, high damage competitor to the Assault Class's SMGs. If you're playing on maps like Argon Forest or St. Quentin Scar in the town, the full auto mode can really dominate and give the other proper automatic weapons a real run for their money. Now I've become rather partial to the optical variant and everyone loves an underdog so I've been using it quite a lot recently in the rush game mode and that's usually dominated by scouts with their proper optical sights and marksman medics using the Mondragon or the Selbstlader. Pop up with the Che Rigotti optical for mid-range in full auto mode and you'll end up surprising quite a few people who thought they were going to win that gunfight. It's a good rifle to use if you fancy having a tough game against other players with weapons that are clearly superior at longer ranges and when you're playing rush you really will be at a disadvantage with the Che Rigotti. But beyond Battlefield 1, what does the history of this weapon look like? Have DICE modelled the Che Rigotti accurately against the weapon's real life attributes or are we looking at something that was adapted to really suit a first person shooter video game? Let's take a closer look. The Che Rigotti was first designed and built in the late 1890s by an officer of the Royal Italian Army and his name, funnily enough, was Amerigo Che Rigotti. That's how the weapon got its name. It was one of the first self-loading rifle designs to be produced in the world and it was actually tested by various empires and armies around the world some 10 years after it was invented. Can anyone guess why? Oh yeah, there was a world war coming. 
Unlike many of the other early semi-automatic weapons, however, the Rigotti held an advantage of being considerably smaller and offered what looks like a carbine format. That made it fairly lightweight and easy to transport on the body of a soldier. What I haven't told you yet though is despite all of those empires testing the weapon, it can only ever be classified as a prototype as it was never officially adopted into service with any nation and information on the weapon is actually fairly limited. The Che Rigotti supposedly was produced as an alternative to the Italian Carcano rifle or the Modelo M91 as it was designated, which is a bolt action rifle produced a few years earlier. With the Carcano being the weapon of choice for Italian troops at the time, you might expect the Che Rigotti then to be a conversion, using most of the Carcano parts and then having them modified to fire fully auto. That's not actually the case. The Rigotti does indeed include some parts of the Carcano, but most of it was crafted purely for this weapon. It features a fixed magazine system with rounds needed to be loaded through the receiver on the top of the weapon via stripper clips, and that receiver is one of the original parts that was created specifically for the Che Rigotti. It wasn't taken from the Carcano. The first original prototype was chambered with the 6.5 by 52mm Manlicker Carcano round and that's the same round that the bolt action M91 rifle we mentioned earlier fired as well. And depending on which reports you read, it will tell you different numbers regarding ammo capacity. The reason why it chambered the same round as the M91, the 6.5 by 52 mm round was the standard issue for the Italian army. Going back to ammo capacity though, the British military of defense is said to be in the possession of a unit of the Che Rigotti with a 20 round magazine on it, whereas other reports and images only show a very small unit being attached to the underside of the weapon. There are also rumors that during a showing of the weapon in Rome in 1900, that the weapon fired 300 or so rounds in fully automatic fire before it overheated and seized. At that same showing, a 50 round magazine was said to be in use when it was firing those 300 rounds. So what you've got is a small magazine here in this picture, a 20 round magazine on a Che Rigotti held by the British military and a 50 round magazine on a weapon that really can't be verified by anybody because that showing was never fully documented. It really does show that the Che Rigotti was a prototype weapon. In complete contrast to that though, there is one other unit of the Rigotti that's held in the UK at the National Firearm Center with the weapon being chambered with the 7.65 by 53 millimeter Mauser round. Now perhaps when the British ordered these units in for testing, they instructed the designers to allow the weapon to be chambered with different rounds to test its efficiency. That's something really that we're never gonna know the answer to. The reason as to why the Che Rigotti never moved beyond its prototype stage is not known, but many people today speculate it was due to unreliable operation. And this seems like a likely conclusion, considering the weapon was not only one of the first of its type to ever be produced, but so many bodies ordered the units in for testing, but none of them ever accepted it as a weapon into full military service. Reports state that the weapon could fire up to 900 rounds a minute in optimal conditions. But again, we don't know what those optimal conditions actually were for the weapon. Considering we have units left of the Che Rigotti still in existence, it's almost at the same level of mystery as the Hell Regal, which is a weapon we looked at in our first episode. The Hell Regal again, never made it beyond prototype stage, and there's no evidence to suggest it ever existed beyond the single unit being fired by the Austro-Hungarian soldier. We actually have units of the Che Rigotti left, but we still don't really know much about this weapon. So then it seems DICE have bent the rules a little bit here. There's no footage of the weapon in use, there's no true accurate records of how the weapon really operated or performed, and nor is there any confirmation that the Rigotti was ever inducted into service by any of the major powers during the First World War. The full auto mode was revolutionary at the time for a rifle, and dice in the game do make the weapon feel special for having it. 
It's almost a surprise feature that if you didn't know it was there, you probably might never use it in the game. That's the Che Rigotti then, and the end of Episode 4 of Battlefield 1 Weapon History. You might have noticed how I've now covered one of each of the main four types of weapons, one from Assault, Medic, Support and Scout, so next week we'll be starting off that group all over again. It doesn't matter what order we really go in, but I want you guys to leave your comments down below and let me know which weapon you'd like to see next week on Weapon History. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.